Uh, thank you for being in here, guys, uh, to hear a little bit about our project, a uh, large cobalt project that we're exploring and developing in Namibia. So I'll just start by going through some of what we see as the key attributes around the project. It's a, we have at the top there, the tagline there is, is we think it's a strategic asset. It's a, it's a very large project. We've been exploring it for about 18 months now. We've already defined a JORC compliant resource of 112.4 million tonnes uh, with over, over 126,000 tonnes of contained cobalt. So that, that makes this project um, the, the largest sulphide type project located outside the DRC. Uh, obviously we see this project being located in Namibia as being a key feature of why this project uh, is attractive or potentially attractive to, to a lot of groups around the world, in, in particular Western groups, uh, being located outside the DRC, being very large, being very consistent, uh, being low in deleterious elements such as uranium and arsenic are some of the key features why, why we think this project is, is very attractive. Part of the project, we're looking to take advantage of this location in Namibia, the access to uh, relatively cheap uh, me methods of, uh, for labour and things like that, relatively cheap uh, power, being hydroelectric power that we we're able to access here in Namibia, uh, also a very strong mining culture, uh, the uh, background in being able to produce, you know, detail, sort of a high level of chemical chemical products in terms of the uranium industry, uh, and good, you know, good, really good levels of uh, trained personnel available in the country allow us to consider this downstream processing, and we're we're producing a, a product here that will be a cobalt a cobalt product, being a hydroxide, a cobalt sulfate or a cobalt metal product and also with a, with a copper metal credit and a, a zinc sulphide byproduct as well, sulphate, sorry. So just a bit about the company, We've, um, we track the cobalt price very closely. A key feature of the project is that we are 70% uh, of the value or the revenue in the, in the mineralisation is actually in the cobalt, which makes it quite different to a lot of other projects that you may have seen, uh, whereby where nickel or, or copper is the primary commodity with a, with a byproduct of cobalt. So we, we were fortunate enough to, to, raise, to raise money last in April this year, which has given us a really strong bank balance. We raised 12 million at that time, Australian dollars, and are currently sitting with uh, 10.7 million uh, in the bank, which will allow us to progress this project through to the pre-feasibility study by the third quarter of next year. Just a little bit on the board, we have a, we have a strong technical board. Uh, myself and Bill Oliver, both uh, geologists. Pine Farm Bake is a uh, metallurgist and Namibian director. Uh, and Edward Legg is a uh, mining engineer with significant experience in copper cobalt projects in, in Africa. And uh, Renko Matic and Melanie Ross there provide us with the, the financial uh, side. Having said that, we are looking to add to our board sometime in the near future with some uh, further experience in international cobalt markets. So a little bit about the cobalt market. Uh, we've seen that big jump up earlier in the year and then the big, uh, the big fallback. Um, sort of looks very similar to what our, our, our share price for Celsius looks like. Um, you know, we're sort of taking a view here, um, a longer term view, so a two to three year view where we think that once the, the EV revolution really starts to kick in, the battery storage revolution really starts to kick in, we think that the co you know, certainly a higher cobalt price than where we are currently will need, will need to be in play to incentivise the new the new production that's going to be needed to to boost uh, the, you know what what is now a market that's a bit over 100,000 tonnes per annum up to over projected to be over 300,000 tonnes per annum by about 2025. The other news we've had recently was uh, Katanga, one of the one of the largest uh, suppliers in the world located in the DRC. We've we've learnt that they'll be offline for at least the next uh, six to nine months due to urani uranium uh, contamination in their in their product which we think will help to really support uh, the prices over the next uh, six to nine months, whereby we may have been looking at a, uh, a, a market surplus. We're probably now looking back at a deficit again, which we think will give us a nice floor under the price over the coming period. So why are we in cobalt? Uh, lithium and cobalt, as you can see on the left there, is, is really, are really the key components in, a, in, a, in the EV, and, uh, EV revolution. Uh, in terms of the amount of those particular commodities that goes into those technologies. 
Uh, if you look at the chart on the right, in terms of world reserves or reserves of those particular commodities, cobalt sits far and away on top there. So for us, when we got into this project and looked to develop a large project, uh, that, that was a, a key factor. Um, that chart basically says that at three years, if every vehicle was an EV, then you'd only be looking at about three years worth of proven supplies of cobalt at the moment. So the, there's been a lot of talk about cobalt reduction, uh, reduction in the cathode. Uh, yes, that will be occurring, but if you look at the chart on the bottom left there, that, that shows really a true picture of, of, of the fact that this, there won't be, a, it's not going to be a snap change, it's going to be a gradual change to lower cobalt uh, cathodes. And based on the underlying overall demand, we expect that still that, that market's going to still triple by, um, by about 2026. So Namibia, I've already touched on Namibia. Um, for us, a key, a key attractive uh, attribute of this project was the fact that it's located in Namibia. We have a similar type of geology in Namibia to what you see in the Copper Belt, but you know, in, in our view and, and certainly in the market's view, uh, Namibia is a far superior destination in terms of being able to develop a, a, a large, long life, reliable project and, and, and hopefully a large uh, supply of cobalt that'll be able to supply the cobalt market for a long time. So just a little bit about the summary, summary statistics of the project. We own 95% of the project. There's a 5% uh, loan carry share that sits with a local Namibian group. That's a, another, another important uh, factor in Namibia. A lot of the other African nations have uh, far higher local participation rates and we think that 5% is a, is a good level that um, investors are comfortable with and that also provides a benefit to, to local Namibians. Uh, we also have uh, at, the, at the company level, the Celsius company level, uh, one of our largest shareholders is a group called Gecko Namibia. Uh, you may have heard them present, uh, so some of their guys presenting earlier today. Uh, they, they provide us with our in-country drilling services, uh, geological services, and uh, a really good uh, team to have uh, on the ground for us in Namibia, given that we're located a, a fair way away in Australia. So just talking a little bit more about this large resource that we've already defined, uh, as I said, it's, uh, it, to our understanding, the largest sulphide-type resource in the world outside the DRC. Uh, 126,100 tonnes already uh, for contained cobalt of over 126,000 tonnes. Uh, open in all directions, a very, very large resource, and, and we've really only scratched the surface of the resource here. Certainly the resource size here is never going to be uh, any sort of restriction on us, on us at Apuo. Um, it'll be, you know, for us the challenge is around really driving down the, the operations cost as low as we can so that this project can be robust in, in times of uh, lower cobalt prices as well as higher prices. A little bit more detail on the resource, it just shows the, the, the important facet there is the fact that uh, most of this resource is the sulphide type which means that it's amenable to flotation, conventional flotation techniques. Uh, we're still working on doing a little bit of work upcoming on the oxide zone there uh, to be able to recover metals from that zone and, and therefore increase our opportunities for op uh, an initial open pit uh, mining at the site. Apart from that, it'll be underground mining. So where do we sit in amongst our ASX peers? Uh, you can see there the, the orange projects, we separate those from the grey. The grey ones are the nickel laterite type projects. Uh, orange are the sulphide types, and as you can see, we sit really high up on the on the list there already in terms of the contained cobalt, especially when considering uh, our, our sulphide type project peers. Uh, we're up there more in that sort of zone with the big nickel laterite projects in terms of our contained cobalt, and of course our, our capital expenditure requirements for projects of this nature are, are expected to be significantly less than what you would see for um, for the nickel laterite projects. That's just a couple of images as showing just what the what the mineralisation looks like. It's uh, I suppose the key attribute of, of it is that it is very very simple, very simple, very consistent, very predictable, more like a coal seam. So in terms of the the resource development, uh, we will be updating our mineral resource within the next month or so. We'll be including this zone there in green on the on the left hand side of the page. There we've got an exploration target out on that already, and we expect uh, a high probability that that will convert into indicated and inferred resources in the near future by the end of the year. Um, it's based on a lot of drilling, so it's not just a you know it's, it's a lot to support this exploration target here already. Just talking about the scoping study, we had a scoping study come out uh, recently, we released, we released only a qualitative uh, version of that scoping study thus far. We, we need to do a little bit more work on some of the metallurgical work and the mine planning work and we, we've currently got work programs underway to address, address those matters and we're looking to update this scoping study in March of next year on the way to reporting a pre-feasibility study uh, in the third quarter of next year. 
So the scoping study was a positive result. There, was no, there were no showstoppers in terms of environmental, water, power, infrastructure, social issues, or the technical ability to be able to produce the products we need to out of this project. For us, it's about spending more time on the metallurgy to, uh, to optimise those processes and drive the cost down as low as we can. Just a little bit on exploration. We've recently completed a SkyTem survey for the f uh, that have been completed in this area for the first time. We will be um, shortly, uh, in fact, on Monday, we'll be uh, doing some initial exploration drilling on some of these exciting targets, so the market can expect to hear a bit about it on that uh, within the next week or so. Thank you very much. <laughs>